welcome to part two of our Guinea Genetics Color Series. Today we're going to be talking about the Lavender Group, also sometimes referred to as the Blue Group. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out part one, where we introduce two new genetics to the Guinea Fowl Series. Those two genetics are going to be the recessive genetics of semi-pearled and attenuate. Today we're going to look at the Blue Gene, aka Lavender Gene, and how it interacts with the semi-pearled and attenuate genes, as well as the fully pearled genes. Today, right now, we have a lavender hen. Lavender is fully pearled um, lavender. Um, genes has no recessives. If you want to come in close, I can tell you about her. So as we should be familiar already, if you watched part one of our series, you should know those two dead giveaways that she's a fully pearled bird, genetically speaking. The first is going to be her pearls. All throughout her body are going to be pearling. You're going to see on the wing feathers, on her shoulders, as well on the flanks. The flanks are always the best way to see a bird's true color. As you can see, a lavender is this pretty blue. It's a very popular color among most breeders and owners. Um, they do fade as well, and when they fade and get stained, they turn more of a brownie blue. This also here is going to be what's called a collared lavender. As we mentioned before, there are two types of pearling that are fully pearled. The collared, that which lack the pearling, they have a collar of color around their neck. And the greater pearled, um, that have pearling all the way up to the base of the neck. Um, the other thing that gives her away as a fully pearled bird is going to be her neck color. Fully pearled birds always have that darker neck skin. Nice strong black down that neck, of her, down her neck. And that is going to be a lavender. Here we have a coral blue. A coral blue is going to be that lavender uh, genetics combined with the semi-pearled genetics. So if you want to think of it about it in colors, it's going to be a lavender combined with a floral purple to make a recessive coral blue. Coral blue is one of my personal favorites. It brings out a very striking rich blue color. They even have little darker blue outlines to their feathers usually. They are semi-pearled, so if you want to come in close, I can show you that. If you look at this coral blue up close, the one thing that gives it away as a semi-pearled bird is the fact that it has pearling on its body, but not throughout its entire body. So if we look at its back, we can see some faint pearling along its back, along the edge of its wing feathers. But if we look at its flank, we can see a lot more pearling on its flanks. The flanks are also a good way to see a coral blue's good true color. It's this deep, rich blue throughout. It's a very pretty bird. The other thing is if we look at her neck, you can see her neck skin is a dilute color. Instead of being that strong black, it's going to be that weak blue. So again, I'll show you uh, the powder blue and sky blue up next. And it's very important with these two varieties coming up that you pay attention to the next skin color because they can get quite tricky. And this is a coral blue. One thing you might have noticed about this bird is that her last three primary feathers on her wing are white. This is not a trait unique to coral blues. This is actually an expression of a white allele. However, do note white primaries are not a true pied and are not the pied that will give you white when bred to another pied. What we have here is going to be a powder blue. Powder blue is a fully pearled attenuate lavender. Um, they turn into a very kind of dusky uh, light blue with not any pearling on their body. Um, if you want to come in close, I can tell you more about her. So if you remember from our previous video when I talked about the slate, Powder blue is going to be the equivalent of that in the lavender group. They both are going to be that kind of dusky kind of gray color. If you look at the flanks, you see that these flank colors are again that kind of dusky gray blue. The thing that gives this bird away as a fully pearled bird, despite not having any pearls on its body, is that dark neck skin of black. I don't see any pearl bleeds on this particular bird. But if you look very careful right here, you can barely see some faint pearling. These are called ghost pearls, where they're just a, there's just a glimpse of them there. That also shows it's fully pearled genetic um, background, even though it's not showing as true as an actual pearl. And that is a powder blue. Here we have a sky blue cock. A sky blue is going to be a semi-pearled attenuate lavender. Um, in this color, we uh, start to see more of a pinky color to that blue. If you come in close, I can show you that. 
So sky blue is pretty unique. It's when we start to see really see that pink kind of start to come out in the blue colored birds. You'll see in this flank, it has a slight pink hue along this chest feather, almost an iridescent. You also will notice the complete lack of pearls. That is again, because he is a semi-pearled attenuate bird. And if you look at the neck skin on him, you'll see his neck skin is also dilute, which gives away that he's also a semi-pearled bird. It's pretty easy to confuse these guys with the powder blues. They are a slightly different shade of that blue, but the easiest way to tell them apart is going to be the neck skin. And I will show you a comparison video here shortly. Otherwise, this is a powder blue. Here we have the four birds that you will find in the lavender group. On left is the fully pearled lavender, which is a knot attenuate. After that, we have the coral blue, which is a semi-pearled non-attenuate. Next up is the powdered blue, which will be a fully pearled attenuate. And on the end here, we have a sky blue, which is a semi-pearled attenuate. They will all be different shades of blue. And as you can see, we have distinct differences in pearling. The powder blue and the sky blue are going to be the most easy to confuse as adults. But again, if we look at the next skin color, you can see the lavender and the powder blue, which are the fully pearled birds, have a dark next skin color. While the semi-pearled varieties of coral blue and sky blue have that dilute neck color. Here we have the four lavender birds together. On left is the lavender. Up front is the powder blue. In the back calling is that coral blue hen. And then on right on the co corner is the sky blue cock. Here we have a visual I created to demonstrate the four colors that we find in the lavender group. That will be the lavender, the coral blue, the powder blue, and the sky blue. All four of these varieties share the same recessive allele. They must be homozygous for the recessive lavender allele. In the top left, if you're looking close, this is a lavender. Lavenders will be fully pearled, recessive lavender, non-done, non-attenuate wild type. If we look at the adult bird, we see a blue base with white pearling throughout. It will have a dark neck skin. If you look at the keat, it looks much like a pearl with those strong stripes. However, it has a blue and gray base. In the bottom left is the coral blue. Coral blue will be the lavender plus the semi-pearled recessives. The adults will be a rich blue with pearling on some of the feathers, but not all of the feathers. It will have a dilute neck skin, and the keat looks much like a rural purple with those squiggly lines in white all the way up the shoulder. However, the base will be blue and gray. On the top right is going to be the powder blue. Powder blues will be fully pearled, lavender, non-done, attenuate. So again, this is the introduction of the recessive homozygous attenuate on a lavender fully pearled bird. Powder blue adults are a dusky blue with a dark neck skin. As far as pearling goes, they will not have any true pearling, but you might see some ghost pearls or pearl bleeds on the feathers. If you look at the keat, much like the slate keat, we no longer have any stripes on the body, but the body is going to be a dusky blue color. It's important to note that keats of a powder blue do not have any white on them unless they will be pied. In the bottom right, we see a sky blue. Sky blues are going to be the combination of three recessives. It will be the recessive semi-pearled, the recessive lavender, non-done, and then the recessive attenuate. If you look at the adult, sky blues are a very pretty light blue throughout their entire body, lacking all pearling. It will have a dilute neck skin. If we look at the keat, the keat will look much like a violet in that it has no striping, but has white going all the way up the shoulder. However, again, the base down color is now a dusky blue. When comparing these lavender colors to the colors we've discussed so far, it would be difficult to confuse any of these four colors with any of the four wild colors, both as adults or as keats. However, powder blues and sky blues are going to be the most confusable varieties that we've talked about so far, especially as keats. Some people can confuse pied powder blues as keats with sky blue keats, as both of these keats will have white on them. However, remember, 
the white on sky blue will always go to at least the shoulder, while most pied powder blues, the white only goes halfway up the wing. Things can get pretty tricky when you introduce extreme forms of the white alleles, such as white wing and pinto. As this pushes the white so far up on the down of the keat, it can become difficult to tell them apart until they're adults. As adults, the best way to tell a powder blue from a sky blue, if you are unsure, is to look at the neck skin. Because all fully pearled birds are going to have that dark, deep, almost black neck skin, while semi-pearled birds are going to have a dilute, more blue-like neck skin. And remember, if you're ever unsure of a bird's true color genetics, don't be afraid to test breed and see the results to try and judge what you might have in a bird. I hope you enjoyed this video where we discussed the four varieties within the lavender group. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out the introduction and the part one where we discuss the wild group of pearl, royal purple, slate, and violet. Keep an eye out for part three where we will discuss the done genetics. Be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions and do not forget to subscribe to support us in this endeavor. Until next time, on the farm.